He just with my hair. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hearthstone Singapore Major. Lothar's fixing his hair, trying to make sure he looks pretty for the camera. How you doing, Lothar? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Good. It's been a long day <laughs> filled with fantastic Hearthstone matches and the fastest loser final I've ever seen in my entire life. But that means we are down to just two. After three days of open competition, almost 200 players who came to Singapore to attend the Singapore Major. We are down to just two, and they're both from Singapore. That feels good. Feels good. For the good. local players yeah. and local community, right? It I'm does. I'm sure they will just be cheering all the time. I don't know if you guys hear them, but they're like behind the wall here, um, watching the games, and they're always like re reacting so fiercely to what's happening. Yeah. Uh, what the draws are doing, what you know, what what the player is like deciding when he's reaching for a card, and then it's like, no, don't do this. They especially <laughs> love Enhanced Mechano. I've never seen anybody, any community, or any single person like the card Enhanced Mechano more than the Singaporean crowd uh, here at the Bunk Hostel. So the Singapore. bands are Warrior and Warrior. No surprise here. No surprise. I mean, I would have just banned the Druids, but that's me. Hey. So. Yeah. Yeah, Druid's been doing pretty well so far today. It's actually been doing pretty well for the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Got him. All right, well, we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to jump into game number one. It's Paladin versus Paladin. Secret Paladin versus Secret Paladin. Let's just wait for standard. <laughs> Secret so. Paladin will still exist. Think so? Yeah, he just get rid, of, get rid of Avenge and put in an eye for an eye. That's a good secret. It is. It's a fantastic secret. Way better than the Sacred Trial. Yeah, we argued about that yesterday. Sacred Trial is just the worst snipe. Yeah. So Shiny Pants is going to get a huge initiative here. Being able to play the Knife Juggler on wow, an empty awesome. board. Knife Juggler on an empty board and then into the Master of a Battle in the Mirror Match. Yeah. is like, whoa. Because no one plays Consecration anymore. Or they have like one. Yeah. So h how do you deal with that? That Consecration here will be perfect if he, if he will have it, right? And if he would have four mana. Yeah, of course. But like, Bass for Battle here, sure. I'll damage the Knife Juggler to kill it next turn. Oh man, but he's going to take so much damage. And Muster for Battle on the other side is going to punish him so hard. Second half is going to be pretty sad to see this. Ooh, eyes closed. <laughs> Snipe it. Two One, down. two, and will it be a trio? Yes, it's a trio. I mean, it didn't really matter that much. If two were hitting already... Yeah. Saves one damage to his face, though. Yeah, it can be a... <laughs> <laughs> it can be a <laughs> perfect match with 30 HP. You know, flawless victory. Yeah. Finish him. Babality. <laughs> yeah, Cyan half just got to take that damage again. He's going to go down to 18 already. Turn four, and he's on 18. Yeah. Sounds harsh. And now Shiny Pants still has a, a, a decent curve here Ooh. to keep going. He's got so many good plays here. He has Pilot Shredder, he has Blessing Kings, and he has Keeper of Ultimate. All of those are great plays. But which uh, one's the best? Probably Pilot Shredder. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Because you can still keep the Keeper of Ultimate as a defensive card. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. And Blessing of Kings is like a charge minion, but you need a minion to carry him on the back. Yeah. Like y you can... Think about Blessing of Kings as a mount, maybe as a rider, and uh, one of the minions as a mount on it, right? Mm, yeah. For it, so I would like to see the Pulse Shutter here because it has like one use, only one use of it, uh, like in uh, in the perspective when Keeper of Uldoman has like two mm -hmm. ways of using it. Oh man, probably the worst draw on the deck because he can't even use that card, and he's gonna use the Owl. Going to be able to trade in here. The juggles are missing. No. Those, wow. those are the worst juggles ever. That, so I think those were the worst possible juggles. Oh, he, he could have missed the first one as well. Yeah. So how much damage is that? That's uh, just game. Is it? Yeah. Well, you can... He attacks in with the weapon to proc Noble Sacrifice. He's got nine damage on board with Blessing of Kings. Is it better to attack with the 1-1 one -one then? You play I guess first so. Blessing of Kings. Oh, no, because it's not guaranteed lethal because the juggle will happen from the Noble Sacrifice. This is why you want to attack with Blessing... You play Blessing of Kings first. And then you at you play Blessing of Kings first on a 1-1 one -one and then attack with the other 1-1. One -one. Yep. 
Or with the weapon. That's a doesn't guaranteed really lethal. If he does it in that sequence. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Y yes, it is. Because you have five damage, Yeah, it's damage, a guaranteed lethal if he yes. does it in that sequence. You just have to play Blessing of Kings first. So he can also play Secret Keeper, but we'll see, we'll see if he finds it. It's he a, might it's be a, nervous. It's a likely lethal no matter what, but it's a guaranteed lethal if you play Blessing of Kings first. Here we go. Bingo. Weapon first. He got it. Very Here well we played. Go. Shiny Pants finds it. Well, and the ultimate justice with the hammer to their face. Yeah. All right. Well, that's Shiny Pants taking a quick 1-0 lead here in the Grand Finals. That was blazing fast. Yeah. Again, blazing fast. These two players have eliminated all of the control decks uh, <laughs> from, from the tournament. So... And they they banned out each other's control decks. Seems like a um, certain strategy is emerging. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? Uh, Secret Paladin Druid Zoo Warlock? I heard that's pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, I heard it's a pretty strong lineup as well. Yeah. And then insert warrior here to bait bands. <laughs> so now <laughs> we're going to see Secret Paladin. Well, did no. Uh, did Sign Half have a Zoo Warlock? That's his warlock. Yeah, well, he, he has an enhanced on the candle, so it has to be as a warlock. No, I'm Cyan half, not. Oh yeah, you mean that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sh yeah, Cyan half did. He had the uh, the zoo warlock last game, if I remember correctly. Hmm, he's not keeping the mysterious challenger, although he's on the coin. I find that interesting because I always try to keep it. Mm -hmm. It's just so important to have it. Yeah, with coin. With coin, yes. Wh when you're not on coin and you're playing against a slow deck. Yeah. Then yes, a slow class because you know you don't know the deck, right? Usually. Yeah. Then you keep it if there's like a warrior or if it's like a priest or let's say no shaman. Right? Yeah. Uh then then you can keep it on the in the opening hand even if you're going first because you just need value cards. Similar situation to Engine of War, uh, sorry, Engine of Lore against uh warriors. Yeah. Well, luckily, Shiny Pants does have an answer to this knife juggler, but he does ruin his curve ever so slightly. Not a problem, though, because now he has the brand on a f like clear coast, right? So, brand with Dark Peddler next turn will be incredibly powerful. Yeah. Now the question is, do you trade into the one one? I think you do because yeah. you deny the Coke Hammers, right? And yeah. they have so much value in this matchup. Yeah. Shiny Pants is on point so far. In this series. And there's no way that the Paladin can kill a 4 HP minion on turn 3. Unless he uses an Arc and Golem. <laughs> yes. Probably not gonna happen. So, easy double Dark Peddler. Now let's see his discovery first and then we can decide if you want to play the Egg or the um, something from the Peddler. Yeah. Void Walker, obvious choice. A second oh Void Walker. Man. Or Relic. I can't spell that. Reliquary Seeker. Thank you. Hmm. I think you still picked the Voidwalker, though. Reliquary Seeker is a very situational. Imagine minion. it with Bran. Oh my god. Becomes a 9 9. Yeah. But you need 6 minions, so. You need 6 minions and a Bran, which is very unlikely. Well, 5 minions and a Bran. Technically. But yeah, doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah, the Void Walkers are safer play here. So you probably want to play the Void Walkers right now, just to play around any kind of weapons, and that's very nice done by Shiny Pants. Yeah, protecting the Bran. So now Low Tap will increase every single spell by 10, <laughs> making even a one month spell unplayable on turn 6. Yeah. Cyan Half is gonna have to. Wait, actually, do you want to play load up this two sure. POs? But yeah, putting a 5-5 five five on board instead of a f potential 4-4 four four is way better. Yeah. Because the game is going so fast, you don't even want to trade. Yeah. You just deal damage, 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 damage. <laughs> Both our powers up as the day goes on. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I, th I think uh, using the Keeper of Ultimate on the Lothep is 
probably better than just playing the Powder Shredder because it doesn't trade into it. But we'll see if Shiny Pants can pick up a Battle Cry. <laughs> oh, that's a Battle Cry. That, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think you're really worried about taking the six damage. To the no, phase. I think you just play it and just close your eyes. Okay, no, I'll be like, okay, yeah. we'll just take the damage. Sure. Yeah. Damage. 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 <laughs> you can also trade in the two, two, the two, two attack minions well, before playing it. He doesn't have to play it anymore. Sure. Yeah. You can just deal seven damage to the face and play double two drops. Yeah. You have eight damage in your hand. So a single Doom Guard draw would mean that you have 14 damage from the from the hand. Yeah, which is quite a lot when you think about it. Yeah. Nice. Nice. He's being super aggressive. I like that. Hunted Creeper. Let's go. Good. 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 So now um, Saya needs to kill the Brand Bronzebeard and the Low Tap, and he will have an easy way of doing that with the Cockhammer. I yeah. think actually he could have considered attacking first and then playing Cockhammer just to have a free one taunted up minion with Divine Shield. Uh, this is a this ends up being better with the board just because now he can't kill with the board, whereas otherwise he would have been able to. Okay, never mind. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're correct. This is weaker. Oh, look at that! Whoa! Did I just say that something like this might happen? Yeah. You did. So you can use the power of overwhelming, and I think you want to play the flame imp. Do you? I don't think so. You just value the both POs right now. So you can PO the egg, PO the hunted creeper, play the doom guard, go face. Oh, that's nine damage. Yeah, he's already at sixteen, so that'll put him down to seven. And he'll be left with still a pretty decent sized board. Yeah, I think I like that better, especially since the shielded mini bot just trades right into the the flame imp anyway. Yeah. So it's whether or not you want to put four extra damage to the face. Or and zero. Yeah, <laughs> or zero. And three damage on your face. Seems like a good deal. I'll but, take it. But you freeze the mini bot. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. So attack with the egg. Um, attack with the egg. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny Pants has been making the right... Oh, oh wait, we right. forgot the Noble Sacrifice. Okay, never mind then. I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Attack with the creeper. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> we, s we were saying that the whole time. Nobody knows you the just difference. just completely forgot about the secret. Yeah. No one saw that. Yeah, but still, though, that's a menacing board for Cyan Half to be staring at right now. And, I, I mean, it looks like he's going to go down in the series 2-0 to zero now, judging by this. Is there any way that he can survive? I don't think so. Like, even if you play the... Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Even if you play the Blessing of Kings, it's a 6-6 six, six minion. W so it's basically a Tyrion without the Death Rattle, without the Taunt. Yeah. So it doesn't even kill the Doomguard. Yeah. And the Doomguard is like, I don't care. Yeah. I'm on 1 HP. It's still fine. Yeah. I'm not dead. It's All a right. flesh wound. It is only a flesh wound. Well, Shiny Pants... This is going fast. Yeah, he looks tired, but Shiny Pants is one game away. One game away with a druid, so anything can happen. Literally. Almost. Actually, there's only two things that can happen. He either wins or loses. Wow. That's like a mass points. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 60% of the time, it happens every, every time. Yep. That's a good quote. All right. So let's see. Will there be innervates and keepers? Living Roots is a good start. It's not bad, that's yeah. for sure. It's but better to have it than not to have it. But Cyan Half also has a good good, good hand here. Hmm. You might even just keep all of it. I think I would. Yeah. Seems like a good opening hand. You have Flame Imp on turn one, Haunted Creeper on turn two. At any point during that sequence, you can coin out a Abusive Sergeant to... Uh, to trade up into something maybe that's innervated out. So, yeah, hmm. keeps all of that. <gasps> no living roots on turn one? I'm surprised, actually. He's playing around Hunt Creeper. Yeah. Well, the living roots on turn one would have just traded into the flame up anyway. But there had might be an option that there wouldn't be a flame imp, right? Yeah. But at the same time, Void Walker would just destroy those minions, yeah. right? So if you if you were planning to use something on Tintu, then you can't kill the Void Walker. Yeah. 
It's kind of sad. That's a that's a very disciplined play uh, from Shiny Pants. A lot of players would just go ahead and automatically play that Living Roots without even thinking twice. So uh, an interesting line there. But look at Shiny Pants' curve. He's got Powdered Shredder next turn into an Innervated Ancient of Lore the following turn. Which is awesome. Yeah, so he's in a good spot. Also has the option of just to Azure Drake instead. Which might be good as well, because if you have a Force of Nature and an Innervate and you get a Savage Roar, this might be, like, you know, yeah. ending soon. Or if you draw into a Wrath, then Azure Drake could be better because you can ra you can Innervate out of Wrath mm -hmm. for either 4 mm -hmm. damage mm -hmm. or 2 damage in a, in a cycle. 2-2, two, two, not bad. Could have been worse. But where is the swipe when you need one? Oh my god, this swipe would have been so juicy right now. Nope. Nope. Hmm. It's four mana. But not I a swipe. I guess you still need to play the Ancient of Law. Yeah. You need to get that swipe. He can still just play Azure Drake, which opens up more opportunities for board removal in the next turns. It gets one card instead of two, so in yeah. overall your chances of getting the swipe are I'm not sure how many cards are in the deck. Slightly lower. There's twenty he was on the coin, right? 23. No, no, no. So 27 was the opening, and then he did draw five cards, so 22. Okay. So it's three draws from 22, so it's like 2 to 22, 2 to 21, 2 to 20, right? If he will do the ancient draw. Hmm. hmm. Not quite there. It also makes it kind of more awkward for the plus two buffs yeah. for uh, Zoo. So it's not an easy trade uh, with a single abusive side on the Dwi Oath or the Die Wolf Alpha. But still, kind of like a low, low investment yeah. for Zoo to just trade with those. These are some pretty good trades, though. For Sai in half, he's building up a strong board. He's able to play the Ooze as well, and is starting to get in that chip damage from these low attack minions. Has the Doom Guard in hand as well, so... That's a fantastic card against Druid, because it immediately impacts the board. And a lot of times you're okay with discarding cards that are you know, not as useful in this matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, Implosion at this stage doesn't feel like it's useful because this board is already full. Well, it might not be anymore because the Force of Nature seems like a good play this turn. Yeah. It's either Druid with the Claw in Taunt Mode and then you attack into the Void Walker and you pray that your opponent doesn't have the PO. Yeah. Or you just force of nature this, attack into the Void Walker, you kill the 3 2, the 2 1, and a 1 1? Yeah. Yeah, this kinda sucks. Hmm. Seems like the Druid of the Call might be actually better. You still kill one creature, and you put a huge roadblock. Which is not that appealing against Doomguard. So I'm not sure actually what is the correct play. But the consensus is. You're in a really bad shape. Mm -hmm. It Hero seems power? like how most Zoo Warlocks for Druid matches seem to go. What about Pile the Shredder? Yeah, you could hear power down the Abuse Sergeant as well. Yeah, power maybe that was actually Shredder. better. I think so. Ooh, Ooh. just... Ni just... Who cares Ooh. about the implosion? Yeah, well, that will be painful. And the implosion hitting for free. Bye bye, Shadow Next Ramus. Goodbye. Well, this is the end. Looks like so. Yeah. Swipe can save some. Keeper of the Grove doesn't. can pick up the knife juggler, but other than that, it doesn't do too much. Cause now you just it's Force of Nature, right? Because you kill the Imp Gang boss, you save the 1 1 because he's not spawning because it's full. And then you kill the knife juggler and the 1 1. But, I mean, you're still losing, so not that yeah. big of a difference. Hmm. He's thinking of whether or not he wants a wild growth. You can combo next turn. Does it help? No. I mean, th it helps with the Doom Guard, but that's about it. Do you want to throw a 4 attack? Oh, wow! Look at that! Paddler into one drop. Into Coin into Doom Guard. Coin Doom Guard. Whoa! Oh, that's good. I heard that's a good card when I have a full board. When you have a full board, that is right. He's going to have to trade in one and then play the Reliquary Seeker. 
Trade in another. Coin out the Doom Guard. Ban. And Shiny Pants is done. Th his best play that he could possibly make next turn would be press escape and click concede. Well, it can still combo, but that's not enough to clear the board. That's yeah. like nightmare scenario. A lot of damage going out the face. Sub 10 health now. Uh, combo would allow him to clear off both of the large minions, but he'd have to take five damage. There'd be five left on board, so it looks and like dead. It, yeah, it looks like it's mathematically impossible for him to. <gasps> There's one way that he could win, or that he could clear this board. If he Azure Drake into a swipe, he would leave seven, eight, because the imp from the imp oh, game yeah, right. lost, yeah. and the Haunted Creeper would die. So it'd be three, and then five. Okay, so that's what he do. His only out is that. And it's like 16 cards remaining in his deck, I think. And then Cyan Half would have to whiff on two draws to find one damage. Defender of Argus would do it. Abusive Sergeant would do it. Power Overwhelming he would do it. He used two Abusive Sergeants. Okay, Power Overwhelming would do it. Second Dark Peddler would do it. Nope, but close. He can Wrath and do another Wrath. Nope, he can't do it. All right, well, Cyan Half puts himself on the board. Going to bring the series to 2-1, to one, still in favor of Shiny Pants, though. Yep. But he's back, at least. Yeah. Oops, shiny sorry. Pants. 2-1 for Shiny Pants, so it's still on the match point. Wow, he looks like... You don't he's see tired. Guys, but, uh, he's tired either, or just thinking really hard. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like we are going to get into the next match here real quick. And Shiny Pants still on match point. Just has to find a win with that Druid. Hasn't been too tough for him throughout the tournament so far, but we'll see if Cyan Half is going to give him a little more trouble. Secret Paladin versus Druid. <coughs> yeah. So he does find the Innervate this time around. Cyan Half pitches his whole hand. Not on the coin this time, so... Not gonna. If he doesn't keep Mysterious Challenger on the coin, he's definitely not gonna keep it not on the coin. Especially not with a good curve. So, uh, see what Shiny Pants decides to keep. Innervate uh, Paladin Shredder seems like a decent option, but also Innervate Druid of the Claw. Which one is better? Well, that depends what will happen from Cyan Half, right? He's. Uh, hmm. Paladin Shredder seems like better choice because you have a guaranteed minion even if your opponent trades, right? Mm. But at the same time, if your opponent will have a choice of buffing the minion attack and just sacrificing one card and still having a drop from something that will buff the, buff the attack, then it's way better. Um, way worse. The dirt will cause way worse then. But uh, you're playing as a pattern, so that's most likely not the case. Mm. Well, he throws away the Jew of the Claw instead. And not the best start from Cyan Half, but he does have a knife juggler. And that, that was an avenge. Ooh. Innervate, coin, piloted shredder. And then you go wild drove. Yeah. Or you could just... Yeah, I like this play. And even if your opponent plays uh, a knife juggler, you can cut it down with the Wrath. Yep. So the Noble Sacrifice doesn't have a chance to kill it. Yeah. The one thing is it would get punished by Redemption. But... Well, that was needed last game. This wipe. Yeah. Yeah, you have to wrap it. You get a lot of information because you will know that this is no Redemption. This is no Noble Sacrifice, right? So uh, you will get either a competitive spirit or avenge, so we can play accordingly to that. Or repentance. Uh, he would have been already triggered, right? He played the Paladin Shredder. F oh yeah, yeah, would have been already triggered, yeah. yeah. You are correct, sir. So, Paladin Shredder trading for 1-1. One one. Well, that's surprising, I would say. Yeah. But he w it was needed to prevent the avenge. Yep. Uh, in case you would just attack for damage to the face. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of odd. I think you just go low tap and for damage to the face. Yep. Start applying that pressure. 
Every point of damage to a Seeker Paladin sticks. Now we can uh, take advantage of the Big Game Hunter, because if your opponent plays only one creature, then you kill the other one, the Avenge lands on the Palter Shredder, and Bruh. then you can Big Game Hunter it. Yeah, brings it up to a 7-5, but he is going to trade this. Is he not going to trade it in? Oh my. Yeah, he has to trade. It's such a valuable trade. If not, he's just going to hit you in the face for 9. Hmm. I'd s okay, so the swipe is a no. Uh, you can attack into the Hana Creeper and swipe clears no matter what. It's awesome. Yeah, and you have hero power as well to just yeah. So no matter what it lands on, if it yeah. lands on the Iron Big Gal, you just swipe the Iron Big Gal hero power down the um, the Wild Pyromancer. Yeah. If it lands on the uh, Wild Pyromancer, swipe just cleans it up nicely anyway. So exactly. Uh, this is a really nice. Here. Well, that's the most awesome uh, thing that can happen to a board like that. Yeah. One damage to the face as well. And Shiny Pants is above the 30 health threshold. Yeah. What is gonna be? Is it Mr. Challenger from the top of the deck? Oh! Oh, 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 there he is! Well, that kinda saved the day for Cyan Health. Yeah. Like, literally. Oh, oh, I mean. Oh. But the big game hunter here is to the rescue. Yes. So you just hero power and attack in. And that's a nice, juicy. Without that big game hunter challenger, Sign will be in such a bad position. It's not even, you know, yeah. easy to solve this puzzle anymore. Yeah. Right? But with this, he's putting enough pressure, although there's a big game hunter, that Sign, uh, Shiny Prince has to do something about it, right? So. It was like the only thing that that ma that was uh, that mattered for 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 Cyan Half. Oh, Cyan Half! <laughs> Looked like he felt a, a slight amount of physical pain from that. Oh, and he actually trades. Okay. I like the trade. Yeah, this guarantees. Uh, he he knows that a lot of Secret Paladins don't run Consecration. And they played two double cog hammers. Yeah. Ooh, batch replacement. Chat is going wild. Yeah. I already feel it on my spine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Well, the Tyrion's going to come down next turn, so the damage would have to go through that. Do you think that you just play Shade of Next Ramas here? Just to hide it from the attacks, from the traits? Yeah, you could. Instead of the Emperor? The last, um, the last secret is Competitive Spirit. So every single of those minions will get buffed because you don't plan to kill any of those unless you use the hero power. No. So if you play the Emperor, you hero power one of the one ones, then you deal five damage to the phase, your opponent is at eleven, and he gets two 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 and a five three. So the five three he trades into Emperor and that's like that's not really it. Yeah, and reducing you know. the combo at this point doesn't seem like it matters too much. Shiny Pants making sure that he makes the attack he knows he's gonna make. So that way he has more time to think about and execute the play that he th that he wants to make after this. But um, even though you're floating a lot of mana, Hero Power and Shade of Next Ramus seems like it gives you the best opportunity to win next turn. Yep. But he is going to go with the Emperor Thorsen, so it's going to be cleared. But this also gives Shiny Pants the opportunity to draw into a second Savage Roar, at least by turn 10, to be able to close it out. But this is the turning point for the Secret Paladin. Tyrion Ford Ring can do a lot of work in this matchup in co combination with the board that's already there. And a Coke Hammer. That's for next turn. The and Shredder what placement! What did I just say? Well, it didn't matter yeah. in the long run. But it could have mattered. Yeah, it could have mattered. No! No, it's a 7 6. What if there's a second Big Game Hunter there? Yeah. Nope. Oh, is that. Is Wait, is that the game? Um, he attacks six him with his. 8? That's. No, that's not. No, right. not quite. Hmm. Almost there, though. Yeah. So you just play Shadow of Nextramas, hero power down the Divine Shield, and pass the turn. Because you save double the two damage from the li for the Living Roots, right? So you then next turn you play combo, Living Roots to deal two damage to Tyrion. One of the turns cuts down the Tyrion. And then you have enough damage to just win the game. Can he take seven damage? Take seven damage. He goes down to twenty. So and there would be twelve damage on the board. Yeah, there's. He would die to bless exactly blessing him King's true silver champion. Okay, 
You have a point. Yeah. But at this point, when you're about to win the tournament, Wait, you got to make risky it? plays. 10, 12, 6, 20. Yeah, you're right. He would go down to 20, and there would be that 12 damage on the board. He's not going to attack at all. Is True Server Champion going to put Scion Half outside of range? Mysterious Challenger! And a Kogheimer, and that's a huge problem. If it lands on Tyrion, it's not a problem. But if it lands on anything else... There is a Noble Sacrifice left. Is there? I think so. Did he pull any secrets? Yes, he did pull one. Pulled one secret. Whew. Well, that is not looking good for shiny pants. You can't go through all those taunts minions. Hmm. Um, Druid of the Claw, taunt. If you Druid of the Claw taunt, then you... You attack with the hero power, cut down the noble sacrifice, then you use the Shadow of Nextramas, cut down the divine shield. Then you Living Roots, the 2-2, two -two. and I think that's it. You need to save the combo, but then you're dead. Are you dead? No, you're not, because you have a taunt in the way. And the taunt is get cut down by this, so that's 12, that's 13 damage. Then you're dead to Trust of a Champion, of course, which is in Sion's hand, but from yeah. Shiny Pen's perspective, I think that's the proper way of playing this. Oh, he's going for the Sun of Two Subtics. Okay. That's quite interesting. Because the Noble Sacrifice will kind of ruin his plans. Alright. Well, if he would have used it to kill the... the wolf, then he wouldn't be dead. He's dead. You know what? If he would have used the Living Roots to kill the wolf, right? He would have had to attack him with the Shade, yeah. And then you attack with the Shade, and... Your opponent has two attack and two sixes, six, eight, then that's twelve, and you're alive. But can you win? Yes, you have combo, and your opponent's at eleven. True. All right, well, Shiny Pants couldn't find the solution there. Okay, so it's two-two. It's the final game between those two players. Yeah. The final game, and you know what's coming down to, Lothar? Druid versus Druid. Druid versus Druid. Feels good, man. Seems good. I'm still thinking about the turn. I'm right, right? If if he would have used the um, the living roots on the wolf just to deal the damage and kill it, he would decrease the amount of damage by four. It's out of my mind now. <laughs> okay, never mind. I forgot about it. I have a very selective memory. That's very, very lucky for you. And I chose to forget that moment, unfortunately for all of us. So hard mode again for Wild Girls? I think so. I love when tournaments come down to Druid versus Druid. It's just sort of a, a nice way to to round off the, the entire experience. Mm -hmm. Hard mode again for oh. Cyan Help. He has Innervate, but no... Wild Grove, although he has one Ancient of Lore. And that is a huge deal. Yeah. Hmm. So Shiny Pants is really going to think this over. This is the final game of the entire tournament. Winner takes not all, but half. <laughs> <laughs> and loser takes a fourth or a fifth. Yeah, there you go. Picks up the wild growth. Well, that's huge. Yes, it is. The Keeper of the Grove might be though played just as a 4-drop. Sir Finley? What? Whoa. What? what did do? Dagger Mastery, Fire Blast, and Lesser Heal. What? Well, those are not good. I bet he would like to get a Paladin, a Paladin Power or even Shaman. Yeah. The one thing I've learned here at the Singapore Major is that players from Singapore will put Sir Finley Mergleton in everything. They'll put it in Secret Paladin. They'll put it in Midrange Druid. Well, in Patrons, kind of, you know, they're bad at all if you yeah. want to do it. And some people want to do it. Yeah. Like to do it, even. Well, 
Cyanav goes ahead and picks the heal. This matchup is a lot about the board. And not and, about the heal, right? So Yeah, and and heal can help you to contest the board. Um, but Cyan Half is going to get off to a really good start here. Innervating out the Druid of the Claw. Could this be the start of a reverse sweep from Cyan Half? Innervate. Is it helpful? Not really. Not this turn. And not really that helpful next turn as well. Unless uh, you will get a Wrath. Unless you get a Wrath. But Cyan Half already has the Wrath ready for this uh, Pow to try to... Hmm. Or Darnassus Aspirant, but... Well, that's a tricky situation. I would say the Wrath is probably better. Yeah. Because you help your Innervate survive. Because you invested an Innervate into that Druid of the Claw. By wrapping down the Palter Shredder, you decrease the chances of that Innervate going down next turn. Mm -hmm. So I would say the Wrath is the play. Alright, well, whatever comes out of the Shredder determines how much health... Oh! It doesn't really matter. Oh, uh, it does matter for the five drops. Yeah. Well, you can sacrifice it first, so. Yeah, no and I, I like the decision from Cyan have to go face. There's no reason to trade into that mana wraith, because in order for your opponent to play the fi play any five drops that they probably have been waiting for, they would have to trade that in anyway. So. Yep. Correct. A uh, really good call by Cyan half, and it looks like he's got a pretty big lead. And keep in mind, Cyan half chose the heal, which is on. Um, in a situation where mid range would normally just hero power face with their extra two mana, being able to heal back up one of the minions that you have on board is a much bigger deal. You're right. I didn't think about that. So maybe Sir Finley Mergleton and mid range druid is the new thing. Maybe Cyan Half is creating a a new wave of Hearthstone pros. See, look at this. Puts it out of range. He'll have to expend the hero power or find an extra damage. That's it's nutty. It's it's nutty. <laughs> and Cyan Half already has Shiny Pants down to 19 health as well. So do you need to play the Keeper of the Grove just to kill that Druid of the Claw? I think so. And then you can innervate out the Shade of Next Ramus. Yeah, you're still floating a mana in that case. Oh, well, you know. Bad, event, bad things can happen when you play Druid. Yeah. So. Unless you go for the Azure Drake to get a Wrath? Nah. But that's, that's a very low chance. Yeah, I think you need to keep it out of the Grove. Yeah. And you're probably going to play Ancient of Lore next turn anyway, so using the Innervate and floating a mana to get out that Shade, it, I think that's the right thing to do. The Be problem is the Lotep will die next turn, but it will die to a minion, so you're aware that Sir Finley will get sacrificed for it. Yeah. Hero power? Ooh. Really? Not too sure about that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that as well. So what are the options? Okay, there's a, a, a good reason why would you keep the Innervate this turn. If you get a swipe next turn, you can play Azure Drake, Innervate, Swipe, deal 5 damage, and 2 to everything. Mm -hmm. But the problem is a 6 drop usually is just an Emperor, and then the Swipe is not that beneficial because you already set up a trade of on this board. Yeah. While the Shade of Naxxramas might be very powerful yeah. if played earlier on board, right? Yeah. This is like a minion with delayed effect, so you have to invest some time into it before well, you make any plays with it. Yeah. Well, Cyan Half has a terrible turn. Terrible, terrible turn. He could play a Tempo Big Game Hunter here. He could also Savage Roar to trade up into the Keeper of Grove and use his face to kill the... Uh, well, he can heal his own minion first, right? Decides to go with the Wild Growth instead. Interesting. The wild growth to make up for... He still wants to be able to play the Ancient of Lore next turn. Oh, yeah, right. Because I forgot that is the Darnesses. Oh, my, makes sense now. Yeah. Yes, yes. So healing up the minion would keep it alive, but it could also be killed. And mm -hmm. then if it's mm -hmm. killed... Then you can't play the Ancient of Lore. Then you can't play the Ancient of Lore. And now Cyan Half all of a sudden is at a, uh, gives, has given up board initiative. 
two interface in the hand. Um, do you want to play the shade mag no right now? The innervates are only getting worse. Yeah, so I'm really surprised that he didn't play that shade there. Especially when you have the emperor in hand, because you basically yeah. get the investment back. Yeah. He's getting greedy with those. 14 life for shiny pants. There's a swipe. So he's able to trade with those minions. Asher Drake, Innervate Swipe, Innervate Hero Power, <laughs> and 5 damage to the face. I think it's actually very valuable to deal with the 5 sure. damage to the face. Deal the damage. 5 damage to the Sir Finley. Have to have second swipe or wrath. Yeah, I like the innervate hero power. Oh, never mind. Actually, this is better. Yes. Yeah, this he has Savage Roar. So next turn, he has nine damage on board. Plus the three would be 12. Plus eight would be 20. What did he pick up? An Ancient of War! I would say that's a huge minion. That is a huge minion. But. Oh, Still Savage my Roar! God! Alright, so how much damage is this? Can he get through it? So well, he can use the hero alongside um, Azure Drake, and then it's 9 damage and... It's 17! Is it? So it's he'd have to use his face to get through the Ancient of War along with the Shade of Naxxramas. Uh, because that'd be the most efficient way to get through it, because it'd be a, a 7 attack Shade and 4 attack from his face, and then he'd be able to push 8 from the Azure Drake and 9 from the Ancient of Lore. Okay. Oh, and then he can hero power. No, no, hero power is inconsequential. Hero power doesn't matter because the most efficient way to do it would be put his, his face into the Ancient of War. So I think he's one damage off, unless there's another way that he can do it, but I don't see another way. Four and four. It's five damage now. Hmm. Always something off. And if he, if he attacks into this, he's taking five damage. He goes down to nine. That means Druid of the Claw and Swipe ends the game. Well, 17 damage. He's going to be one off. And that opens up the opportunity oh, he for missed Cyan the half. attack. Well, that, that means, doesn't really matter, but... And that means Cyan half has Druid of the Claw and Swipe. That's eight damage plus the nine damage from the Sir Finley Murgleton. Wow. That was close. And that means that Cyan half. <gasps> oh no! What has happened? Oh no! He just missed lethal. Too soon! Oh no, where's the failfish now? Put it up upstairs. <laughs> what the hell just happened? There was so much damage in hand, a keeper, force of nature. He can, and now he can play Druid of the Claw and clear the other Druid of the Claw and draw with the Wrath. No. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> Not like this. What a match. What a match. So now, um, well, he's dead anyway, but. Okay, he's growth. dead anyway. No, 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 don't be too fast. Don't okay, be too fast. okay, okay, okay. Keep on we'll the girl force of nature. Will Cyan half see it this time? Yes. I'm not going to speak too did. soon. And he does find it, and that means Cyan half finally gets there. He is going to be the Singapore major champion. After a long, grueling battle through an open tournament of many, many players. Cyan half's going to do it, and he looks. He just looks stunned. There we go. And ah, my crown doesn't fit. And a big congratulations. How did you do that? I don't know. I just put it on my head. Big congratulations to Cyan Half. He's going to be the champion of the first ever Singapore Major. What a match. Well, there's certainly a, a some form of clown fiesta at the, at the end. Yeah, right? a miss lethal, but you know what? There's no such thing as miss, miss lethal, only... Extend BM to show your opponent that he missed 8 damage from his attack juicy. and he was so close. Juicy, juicy BM. Okay. That is correct. But yeah, what a, what a performance. You know, having a, an all Singapore finals and, uh, you know, have it go all the way to game number 5. Culminating 
in a series of crazy plays. Look at that turn. And ending in a Druid versus Druid Mirror. That was so close. Thinking too much about which minions to attack, and he just lost the one attack by one millisecond. Or even two. <laughs> oh, jeez. There it is. And now the missed lethal from Cyan Half. Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't call it right there. I was about to declare him the <laughs> champion on that turn. <laughs> and it was so <laughs> close. But, you know, he found it. Imagine if Shiny Pines would have drawn the Keeper of the Grove. Imagine that. And then he would be able to deal to two damage. To his opponent, if he would have missed wow. the attack of the Azure Drake then. That could have been disastrous. Yeah, and then Sanhav would have thrown the final, the champion's title, out of the window. Yeah. But he still managed to find it. You know, I do want to give also a big shout out to Shiny Pants. Because throughout the tournament, you could see his play sort of evolving. Uh, I think he, he played exceptionally well today after some shaking, questionable plays the days before. So uh, both players played exceptionally well. But we do have Pathra standing by with the top four for the winner's ceremony. Hey guys, finally we have the top four winners of the Hearthstone Singapore Majors. In fourth place we have Chonger. Congrats. In third place we have Waning Moon. In second place, we have Shiny Pants. Where are your Shiny Pants? <laughs> and lastly, first place is Cien Half. Congratulations. <laughs> Representing Singapore. <laughs> and congratulations on your bucket of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and uh what's this okay so we're gonna wrap it up back to you <coughs> tj and lothar <laughs> well he didn't get a trophy but at no, least he's, he's got, got chicken, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we've literally been waiting the entire tournament to say that line yeah that's the only reason i agreed to cast the singapore major was just because uh, the bucket of chicken. They told me I could role play as Leroy Jenkins. Just so you know, guys, that was the official, like you know, prize for the tournament. Yeah. They got cash. They got points. Yeah. And they got razor gear alongside yeah. it. So. Yeah. A, a lot of razor gear as well. The first place got a giant pile. I got to see it earlier. So, Cyan Hap goes away with twenty five hundred dollars, um, and fifteen Hearthstone World Championship points. So, a big congratulations to him. That pretty much automatically secures his spot in the, yeah, the in spring the preliminary. Uh, for Southeast Asia, at least, so uh, big shout-out. But it's been a great tournament, Lothar. Uh, I've had a lot of fun casting with, with you and Pathor across the weekend. Um, we've had a lot of interesting decks. We've seen a lot of interesting plays and some crazy endings. Uh, what were your thoughts on the, on the weekend? I honestly thought that more people would bring some really different decks mm -hmm. uh, from what I've been used to seeing in Europe, Yeah. an example. But um, I was really surprised. That, like The most surprising factor for me was the kindness of the people. So yeah. I'm really like, you know, just yeah. sweet yeah. to be here. Yeah, it's been, it's been incredibly fun. Uh, we do want to give a huge shout out to the Southeast Asia community uh, for welcoming all of us and having a, a, a great major. They have a, a passionate Hearthstone community. They have a lot of passionate Hearthstone players who've come out to watch and who've come out to play. And everybody across the Asia Pacific region for, for tuning in and, and sending us the players so we could have a great tournament. Yeah, and uh, a nice production as well. And no a nice production delays, as well. Yeah, so. No errors. Yeah. And uh, a big shout out to, uh, of course, the sponsors that make this possible. We have Secret Lab, Razor, Microsoft Surface, My Republic Gamer, and Twitch for making it possible. Of course, a big shout out to Blizzard, Blizzard Southeast Asia. Again, more passionate uh, esports and, and Hearthstone fans all across. So. Uh, from myself, from Lothar, from the entire That's broadcast great. crew here at the Bunk Hostel in Singapore. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Kappa Club. Thank you, guys.
hostel and we're gonna we're go about to party and eat a lot of chicken <laughs> as you can see all the Singapore supporters are here at the lobby <laughs> Guys, wave to the camera. Oh, eat the chicken. Okay.